the five biggest HVAC sizing mistakes that homeowners don't know. In today's video, we're gonna cover some of these mistakes. Unfortunately, some of these may be unavoidable, but I think knowing what they are and how to move forward with some of these mistakes that technicians and different folks in our trade are making, maybe that will arm you with ways to move forward, being able to diagnose some of these things. So let's dive into it. And the first one is there are a lot of mistakes made because of rule of thumb. There's still a lot of rule of thumb things that are being used in our industry. I remember talking to a guy not long ago and he was kind of saying, well, listen, this rule of thumb that I use has never failed me. And what's interesting about some of these charts that you can find online and some of these different types of tricks of the trade that guys will use rule of thumb type sizing things is a lot of times the reason they're being used is because they do work sometimes, a lot of times. The problem is no house is created equal. No house was built in the same year, has the same amount of insulation, has the same envelope and windows and R values of the insulation and all of the ins and outs of how homes are built. No two homes are the same. And using some of these rule of thumb type calculations can get you in a little bit of trouble when you do run into one of those houses that are not cookie cutter and not the same. The analogy I always use is if you've got a thousand square feet, a thousand square foot house, that was built in 1930, old brick building, historic, no insulation, single pane windows, all the other ins and outs of an old historic building, but it's a thousand square feet. And then you compare that to a home today. A thousand would probably be on the smaller end of a lot of these gigantic houses being built, but you know, you take a, a thousand square foot house with today's codes and up to snuff efficiencies and all the ins and outs of today's construction of homes, trying to get them tighter and better insulated and all the different things that guys monitor when they're building a house. And we've got two houses that are both a thousand square feet. They are very different. They're going to have very different load calculations, very different home envelope and ventilation requirements and all the different ins and outs of a thousand square feet. So using rule of thumb calculations will just simply not work in that case. And so throw out all this stuff you read online, throw out these websites that say, oh, for this many square feet, for a thousand square feet, you need this big of a, a system. We haven't even talked about the location of the home or the type of climates that that home can see. And that plays right into number two, which is the load calculations themselves. So a lot of sizing mistakes are because guys may get away from the rule of thumb stuff, but then they don't do all the calculations that they need to do to do it properly. So they may do a manual J, for example, but not a manual S, picking out the right equipment or they may you know not do the manual j but then they're trying to size ductwork and not using good practices there manual d is aca's standard for that and i did a whole video on all of these different calculations that i'll put a link to down in the description of this one but because no two houses are created equal all of these calculations play a big role so when you are figuring out the sizing of an HVAC system for a house, you may be using load calculations like block load, or you may be using room by room calculations when figuring up your load. You may be considering ductwork that is not that long of a run, and that plays a role in your calculations versus ductwork that's got to run all the way across the house and it needs to be sized accordingly. At the end of the day, a lot of guys will talk about sizing ductwork so it's quiet, and I think that's great. I think we should do that. But it's not just how loud the ductwork is. We're talking about comfort here. We're talking about humidity. And we're also talking about each room being balanced, right? You got rooms that may be further away from the heating and air system. Some rooms require a little more airflow than others for different reasons. We already talked about how different homes, right? Some may be in colder climates, some may be in warmer climates, some may be in direct sunlight, whereas some may have trees around them and are covered by shade. All of these things play a role in your calculations. One of the things we started doing on our channel is offering a place where folks can get a third party load calculation done for their home so they can eliminate a lot of these problems. If you've ever had a room that was hot or cold compared to the rest of the house, a lot of times it's because 
they did not size the ductwork or the equipment correctly. Number three is ductulators. I've got one right here. This is actually one of the more simpler ones that I have found, but I'll put a link to a couple good ones down in the description of this video if you do want to get a ductulator. I can't tell you how many times I've seen guys lay out ductwork. They do their math and they're, you know, figuring up, okay, I'm going to run this size duct to this room. And they're using the proper calculations. They've even got maybe blueprints that show what each room needs to have, but they are not using a ductulator to size that out. Maybe they're still using rule of thumb. Maybe they're using some things out of their head that they've used before, but these ductulators are important because they adjust. So as you turn this ductulator and you are adjusting the friction and the airflow, it will show you what size ductwork you need to run there, whether it's round duct or square duct or whatever. Ductulators, I don't think are used enough because they all look like this. They all look clean. This one sits in my office and I use it for videos sometimes, but I used to have one in my truck that did not look this clean. It looked, you know, smudged up and dirty because it had been used. I think every work truck, whether they're a service or an install van, Every work van in America, if they do HVAC, should have a ductulator in that van. Number four sizing mistake is not considering the home itself and the balancing of the room. So it's one thing to say, I've got a house laid out. I know these rooms, I want to have this much BTUs and this size of a duct going to it and, and laying all that out. But sometimes considering that some rooms need to have negative pressure, like a bathroom, for example, we don't want positive pressure. We don't want odors and humidity being pushed out to the rest of the house. But then other rooms should be positive pressure. So rooms like your bedrooms, for example, balancing all that out, especially when you're doing things like ventilation and bringing fresh air into that house, there's calculations that have to be done and there's sizing and all of that needs to be taken into account as you're laying all this out. Now, I do want to stop and say, if you say, Josh, I don't think somebody did all these things you're talking about. One thing that will help you and it helps with this video is a lot of these things in today's home construction are almost kind of by default a little bit. So things like adding exhaust fans to bathrooms, that helps make that room negative pressure. Obviously you need to use those fans, but just knowing that will help with some of the balancing on that front. But just understand that, you know, you don't want to add a duct to the crawl space and blow air in there without some way of sealing. If you're going to condition the crawl space, for example, you want it to be sealed. You want the humidity right and so on, because if you're going to make that area a positive pressure, just know it could be pushing to the rest of your home. And now you're at risk of these musty odors and all these other things that can be in crawl spaces, right? I'm getting a little off topic, but I'm just trying to get you to think about some of the things that we are thinking about when we are laying out how to properly condition or heat a home. And finally, number five is we've done all the right calculations and we've done all the right ductulator and positive balancing and all of the things that we should be doing, right? And I think the final mistake that I see a lot of folks making is the testing. Now I'm gonna get to some honorable mentions in just a moment, so don't cut me out here. But number five is just testing everything and having the proper tools. I talked to a guy the other day and he didn't even have a manometer on his truck. He didn't know what a mega was. And that's okay. We're all on a different journey here of learning. I, I certainly don't know everything. I feel like I'm constantly learning new things in our trade. But at the end of the day, if you're going to lay out a home and you don't have, say, a ductulator or on your truck, or you don't have a manometer to test static pressures on the ductwork, or you don't have a way of testing the air in a home. I hate being so hard on technicians in our trade on this channel, but it's the guys that the, the folks that get offended by my videos are the guys that are cutting corners. Cause a lot of the guys and gals, I always say guys, I mean that unisex, right? It covers everyone. But a lot of the ladies and men in our trade that do things properly, they are not offended by my videos. They're usually like, yep, I agree. They're, they're ruining our trade. These folks over here that don't have the proper tools on their service vehicle, there's no way they could be doing things properly because they don't have these tools. So there's a little trick for you. If you're a homeowner, ask that technician if you could see their manometer. And if they say, 
I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not saying you don't want to find a new technician, but they're definitely still learning. <laughs> and so that's my big five. Let's talk about a few honorable mentions that we didn't cover in this video. There's an array of things that you can have done to have your home be up to snuff, better comfort, better efficiency, better air quality, and so on. Some of the things you can do are energy audits. There are companies that are offering those today. They'll do an energy audit of your home and see where the actual problems are. Other things are things like maintenance and cleaning of the systems, cleaning of your ductwork and so on. I literally had someone just last week tell me, hey, you know, this system just doesn't do like it used to. This system is very old now. It ain't what it used to be. And I, and I asked him, I was like, well, when was the last time you had it serviced? Just out of curiosity. I wasn't giving them a hard time. I was just asking. And they were like, well, I, I never have. I've never taken care of it. And of course, it's not going to do what it used to do. You're not having it maintained and having it cleaned. And finally, the last thing I'll mention as far as honorable mentions is there's an array of tests that we haven't even talked about that you can have done in your home. Things like blower door tests, things like duck blast tests and so on. A lot of these tests are now being code on new houses. So if they build a new house, they want to know that all these things are right, that they're up to snuff. These tests were not something that were created just so heat and air guys can make more money. There's a cause behind them. There's a reason why these tests were invented and some of them may be able to help you in your situation. So that's my five big mistakes. Did I miss anything? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about some of the big mistakes that DIYers make when they're doing HVAC. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.